Welcome in to Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Haig. I am joined, as always, by Mr. Adam Patrick. Hello. Hello. Uh, we're going to start with some news. First of all, departures. Yep. Several of them yeah. over the past week here. Uh, Jeremiah Searles going to Carolina with all of the other former Vikings to form Reserves. Vikings. Reserves. Yeah, <laughs> tip, good point. Uh, like straight away. Vikings East in Carolina there. Who else? Joe Berger retires. Yeah. We... That was, that, was expect, that was kind of expected. That's what I thought, right? We should do a little segment just for Joe Berger because he was here for a long time and he was really good and did a lot of good things. was very solid. versatile. Yes, very solid. Liable. Exactly what you look for. An offensive lineman it wasn't amazing, but wasn't just did the did got the job done. Yeah, and was always there. We need a center. Oh, you just see he'll start this year. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sounds that's, great. That's, that's, we drafted that's, a center. Well, he can play guard. He'll play guard then. Okay, sounds great. We should do a separate segment for Joe Berger. We're not going to. Thanks, Joe Berger. That's <laughs> thanks. Uh, yeah. That's all the all the segment you get, unfortunately. Because we got big stuff planned. Um, what else? Who else left? Shamar, Stefan, Steven. Is it Stefan? Stefan, Steven. I figured if I just threw them both out, we could. Stefan. Stefan. We already have. We already have a Stefan. So. Shamar, Steph, Stefan, Curry, to Seattle, along with along Tom with Tom Johnson. Johnson. As you there said, goes the depth. There goes you know. Now the Vikings don't have anybody at defensive tackle. Yes. But- Curveball After question. Sheldon Richards. What are the biggest needs for this team roster wise heading into the draft? Because as you just said, that's a lot of defensive tackle depth that they were going to, you know, utilize had they been there. They're not going to be there. That to me is a uh, you know, a point of emphasis, something they're gonna look to add to during the draft. What are some other positions do you think uh, that they're well, gonna the, be trying to do that? Uh interior of the offensive line. Berger retiring, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and Searles leaving, they probably want to find someone. I mean, they just signed that guy, what, Compton? Tom, yep. Tom Compton? Tom Compton. He's got a very um, cool name. Yeah, he's a, kind of a, a versatile lineman who can play. I think he can play both guard and tackle. So that's probably that's going to be the new Searles. I think he was actually Kirk Cousins' roommate in uh, Washington. Yes, he does. And he's have from a, Minnesota. Yes, he is. He's all those um, things. He's the perfect signing. And I was doing a little bit of research into the guys that Spielman has been kind of starting to bring in at line. That seems to be a key that he looks for, versatility. Can you play more than one position? Because we're probably going to need you to play more than one position. Yeah, kind of had some bad experiences with uh, TJ Clemmings and and Matt Khalil. Yeah, guys who are just locked into that spot. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, the interior... You know, Billy Price name been thrown out there. He's a uh, Ohio State. I think he played center last year, but he's I think he's played guard in the past. He's him and Pat Elfine are pretty familiar with each other. Um, he just tore his pack at the combine, but he's supposed to be good to go uh, by at least not by training, if not by training camp, at least by like next season. So, and I don't know if he would be a starter. They have Danny Isadora, Isadora, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, he was he was a rookie last year. Actually started a game. I think it was against the Browns. He did pretty pretty well for a rookie. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have him. But yeah, I think interior offensive line, defensive tackle. I don't think is a a need as much as maybe some might think because they did take Julio Johnson last year. Um, but they still probably will use a draft pick yeah. on one maybe in the first, first couple of rounds. 
just for depth wise. And then I think you have to get a corner for, you know, if not for nickel stuff, just for depth. Because right now you have Trey Wayne, Xavier Rhodes, and Mackenzie Alexander. That's pretty much it yeah. right now, other than some, some no-name guys that are farther on the depth chart. But have you seen Mackenzie Alexander's numbers? Pro Football Focus. <laughs> A lot of cool, uh, uh, you know, picture graphics. A lot of graphics. It's easier, easier to do that when you're not on the field as much. But, That's true. Um, but, yeah. I actually am have been I kind of surprised by... I think he's going to progress, actually. I think he'll progress in it again. Cause he, he progressed from his rookie season to sophomore, and I think, I think he'll actually progress into being better than Trey Wayne's. But, mm. see. That... Uh, Th- that thought process, the Mackenzie Alexander is going to progress and be ready and be fine for what they need at that position. I don't remember a lot of talk about that previously, but in the last couple of weeks, that is starting to, I'm seeing more and more points of view, especially on Twitter, of people who are making a lot of sense with that well, as an at, argument. Because I'm, yeah. I'm afraid. He scares me. <laughs> well, they, this... they, looked at, they looked at Trey Wayne's because his Trey Wayne's first two years weren't that great, and then... Was was last year his third year? I think so. I think so. And, yeah, and he looked a lot better than he has in the past. Yeah. So there's right. some still there's still some things that of his old habits that came up, but he still he definitely played a lot better than he ever has before. And yeah. Xavier Rhodes used to wear boxing gloves at practice. Yeah. You got to so, be patient. I know. Especially I'm talking to myself, from, like I need to be patient. But switching he from was, corner, he scares me. I don't know. Playing corner in college and switching to the NFL is turning into like one of the most difficult like transitions to make just because in college you can just be so grabby and touch who like a guy how many times you want to and then the NFL they're like (laughs) don't touch me yeah you yeah well and that and that is exactly it and it feels like it takes a couple of years for these guys to actually understand that you it's not just a suggestion you can't touch them. You actually can't touch. Yeah, but I would grab. say corner and in that you know, same way. I mean, they're probably actually harder to make the transition from college to the pros, maybe even more than quarterback, just because some of the younger quarterbacks that have come in recently and just been able to just mm-hmm. go right away. Yeah, so. only depending on the offense that you're running as a quarterback, that can help a lot. A lot of a lot of colleges running like spread offenses, so offensive linemen don't really know how to you know. Run block and yeah, or hang back. out to uh, like on two cadence yeah, they because to, they've never done that. It's been a guy clapping behind, you know, like yeah, they don't know how to pass protect for like three seconds mm-hmm. because they're used to the quarterback getting the ball one yeah. second. Never needed to. Um, I was gonna say something else about the defensive tackle, but I can't remember. We talked about the. I wrote down mentioning the I think, graphics. I think they got a, an upgrade. Put Sheldon Richardson over those two. I would agree. I would agree. But the the thing is, though, like he's only on a one year deal, so you gotta drafting someone earlier might be a better idea, it's just so that they have somebody if Richardson decide to leave next year. That was exactly what I was gonna say. I would expect them to draft somebody there because I bet Sheldon Richardson will play well and will not be here next season. It doesn't seem gonna... like a guy that's not going to try and get the most money possible. Yeah. And I'm glad he's going to play for this team for a year because yeah, he's because uh, he's he really could good. be the the Carmelo Anthony for for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Be there one year, win the championship, and get out of there. That's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah, no big deal. Speaking of defensive tackles, uh, Sharif Floyd in his Instagram post. Yeah. Of course, he is hurt and had basically like botch surgery style, mm-hmm. and Zimmer had some not so. I don't even want to say kind, but Zimmer wasn't super That's, nice but, about <laughs> the injury stuff with the press. They weren't very uplifting. No, not uplifting. Eh, great way to put it. Great way to but put the, it. It was twist. Tr- Floyd did twist it a little way because how is Zimmer supposed to know? He did say, like, these are the comments that were said two days before my surgery. How is Zimmer supposed to know that the surgery is going to mess up the, his nerves and his leg for the rest of his career? He's yeah. just going based on, you know, Floyd may have not missed – he like a ton of total combined games in his career, but he, there was I remember a bunch of times where he didn't play the entire game or he had to leave because of an injury. And apparently they wanted him to get surgery prior to 2016 season, like during the off season, but he elected not to. Oh, 
and that changes of, it. First game of the year. Oh, knee injury. So Zimmer is probably a little pissed off about that. Like, hey, you should have told you get surgery, surgery and, and now we're out of defensive tackle because you said you'd be fine. Yeah. Do you think he's, that he's, he probably shouldn't have said that stuff? It, that's, that's what I was just like, gonna say. Do you think he crossed like a line there, uh, or do you think that he just kind of was? Because the thing the way about he is, yeah, sometimes he lets his frustrations get the the better, the best of him. Mm-hmm. I think he's got a lot better with that. Yes, especially this past year, because 2016 he was he was really bad about it at times. He was throwing a lot of people under the bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think some some people are like, hey, dude, I think that's part of the like. I remember him talking about like. I think it was Chad Greenway or somebody else coming like into his office and being like, "You gotta stop doing yes. that." <laughs> the meeting, yeah, the meeting with the with the veteran players that yeah. was, I bet, a kajillion dollars that was brought up by a few of them. You shouldn't so, do that. You shouldn't say that kind of stuff about injured yeah, players. At the same time, it's unfortunate for Shree Floyd. I I don't know if he's ever going to play in the NFL again. Um, he did make a bunch of money. So that's good for him. He should be he should if he's not in the NFL, he should be able to be successful in some some other career. Yeah. I don't I at the same time I don't like Vikings fans being like, "Well, he sat for a year and got paid 6 million dollars, so no one should feel sorry for him." Yeah, he still his dreams were broken. He wasn't yeah. a player. So Well, and not only that, but it wasn't something that happened like to him. It was a surgery issue, yeah. you know, like it wasn't he had, it's not, he had to have the surgery. In yeah. order to keep playing, so just unfortunate. Yeah, really. Yeah, just really a huge bummer. I don't. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think Zimmer necessarily crossed the line, but I also don't think it was a very good look for him or the Vikings in general to do that. But again, that was a couple of years ago, and he didn't do it basically all of last year. And he had maybe not so much with injuries last year, but he had multiple opportunities to throw mm-hmm. players under the bus and chose to. Could have said about the quarterback every week. That's what I was just going to say. Especially <laughs> with the quarterback, he could have said all kinds of things. Didn't yeah, there were a lot of times played it last well. year where reporters would ask him like how he thought a player performed like during, either during the season or during a certain game, and he'd be like, well, I'm not here to scout my players at the podium. So I'm yeah. not going to talk about I need that. to watch the film before I well, tell and, you they do terribly. You know, he's, he's going to the general statements like where – you know, there, there's some stuff he can improve on, but there's stuff that everyone else can improve on too, and mm-hmm. there's stuff that I can improve on. So, you know, he's doing the more general, politically correct kind of stuff. Yes, and there's a reason. There's a reason that everybody plays that game, and it's because you kind of have to play the game in order to function with your guys that you're coaching. I mean, people complain about Bill Belichick not saying anything mm-hmm. in his press conferences, but. That's because he doesn't want to start a whole controversy. He doesn't want to make anything not about the team. Yeah. Or have the focus, yes, exactly. Have the focus become this comment on this player at this position anyone, instead of the defense. And anyone who the offense. tried to do that, he, they've gotten rid of. And mm-hmm. It's worked pretty well for them. So. It has. You can look at their they – have, they've been successful. Doing it the way they've done it. Uh, I thought that story was really interesting because it's the first... How long has Zimmer been here? It's the first time I can remember actually having a little bit of reason to be like, oh, that kind of sucks that he did that. Because everything else he's done, it's been pretty... You know, he's, he's got the... I mean, he's kind of a... Like, got the grumpy old man thing going on, which I think is endearing for a lot of fans and people seem to, like, like him as, like, yeah. a dude, you know? But he's also done very well with, you know, there hasn't been a ton of controversy. And when there has been controversy, he's handled it really pretty well. Yeah. The only other thing I can think of besides this is the alleged stuffed animal <laughs> situation. The greatest press conference ever. <laughs> but, Witnessed in my life. <laughs> But so aside great. from that, I mean, he's handled the he's handled it all very well, and it was it was nice to as I was like writing about this and thinking like, how many times has this think, happened before? What is there really is no history of him doing you know, this. He's just handled think, everything well. I don't even think Alex Boone said anything. Hmm. It, it, yeah. It's like and it's shocking he a would, little bit and a really one, good sign. He would be one to say something. Yeah. He's not yes. one to to bite his tongue. No. Uh, 
But I think Zimmer, this is his first stint as a head coach. He's never been a head coach before. He's always been a defensive coordinator. He's never had to talk to the press more than once a week yep. before about other stuff besides like schemes and, and opponents and stuff like that. So. And then was never... He's, never asked the questions that a head coach gets asked because those questions wouldn't go to the defensive coordinator. They would ask the head Even coach. Even right now, he's still learning about stuff. Like, he's getting more involved in the offense and mm-hmm. draft process and all that stuff. Like, he's still continuing to learn. This is his first head coaching job. Like, And that was that was barely a, a little over two years into his job with the Vikings. So he was pretty brand new still Yeah, like when he was saying that stuff. So... Not that, it, not that that's an excuse. No, but but he's progressed into you know being better with that stuff. I was just going to say if it was uh, continued, if, if from that point on it kept happening and was still an issue, then we would have something to talk about. But I feel like because it stopped after that season, that progress yeah. has been made and he is uh, you know getting smarter. I think he probably realized that people who coaches that are like that don't tend to last very long. Mm-hmm. Because the locker room starts to get like in an uproar. Uh, yeah. Look at the Giants last year. So McAdoo throwing Eli and Beckham under the bus and stuff like that. So. What a, <laughs> like what an outrageous season yeah. the Giants had this past year. And what a like caricature of a head coach that McAdoo like wound up being. I don't yeah. remember. Did he do the like slick hair, like sunglasses thing, or did that just happen that was, when he that took was over? Year. And yeah, yeah, that was that was just last year. But the first year he was head coach, he had like a bowl cut. And oh god, mustache, which was way better because he looked like a gym teacher. So. Yeah, dude, New York got to him, man. He just last like, year he looked like a mob boss. Yeah, so. he did. No, no, no. It was worse than that. He looked like a guy who was like a mob boss for Halloween. Looked like the guy that like. <laughs> Your mom dates after she gets divorced. The new guy that she brings. <laughs> it looks like what the guy in the he, small town got, thinks a mob boss looks like. Yeah, and instead of <laughs> like saying hello to you normally, I'll be like, "Hey, son." Yeah, sport. Yeah, hey, sport. There's a thing on the Le- the Levitard show where they do like the like the March Sadness bracket. Oh yes, the like the, looks, looks like, like thing. Oh Mac- my Mac- god, Mac- you have like thirty of them. <laughs> Those are so good. And I saw, I was listening the other day, and they got Hank Azaria as his. Yeah. Uh, as all the voices. Yeah, oh, my God. Simpsons I was so I good. was dying listening. The best one was, I've heard this year, was Jeff Fisher drafted Todd Gurley so he could watch Todd Gurley have sex with his wife. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> Ugh. That's terribly unsettling. Did you, speaking of Fisher, did you see that he got a letter from, like an apology letter basically, from a Texas quarterback who was in Tennessee quarterback, Vince Young. Mm. Vince Young sent oh, the worst, Jeff... The worst rookie, the worst quarterback draft bus, apparently? Yeah. <laughs> sent, okay. sent Jeff Fisher uh, a letter to basically be like, hey, man, my bad, didn't have my head in the right, whatever. Jeff Fisher didn't open it because he wasn't sure that it was actually from Vince Young. Get this. Be- because it was from the University of Texas. That's where Vince Young went to school and was working at the time. And he spelled, whoever wrote the letter spelled jeff fisher's name incorrectly how do you do that i don't know because his last name is fisher his first name is jeff so he doesn't spell it like with a g or something. no nothing weird and i don't think there's it's like a f-i-s-c-h-e-r uh fisher so i don't think i don't think vince young did that well on the wonderland test. you know and but how well how do that... you know you play know your player where it's like this might be from vince here or not, or whatever. But, you know, after reading the story... So how did people not... 
So how did people find out about I, the, he, the he people? He said, he told people, Jeff Fisher told people that, well, Vince Young said that he had sent an apology and never heard anything back. Jeff Fisher then responded by Jeff saying, Fisher I didn't know. Like, oh, I didn't know it was you. Yeah, I didn't know it was from no. him because he spelled my name wrong and it wasn't from, like, it was just from the University of Texas, like, you just the athletic it? department. Right? Or he opened it enough to read that his name was, like, wrong on it and he didn't, like, like get curious. And that's exactly right. But I don't know, you know. <laughs> We cannot be in the mind of Jeff Fisher when he was yeah. in Seattle no, and going 500 or 7 to 9 Tennessee. every year. Tennessee. Well, yeah, and then St. Louis afterwards. After yeah, Tennessee. Seattle. Oh, God. I'm so tired. My brain Monday, just Monday, dude. throws – it just throws random things into Seattle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> at least this time at least this time we got a little ways into the episode it wasn't like the opening like bit where i get inaccurate that was pretty awesome last week uh what else do we want to talk about jeff fisher was wasn't part of it going on. oh yes the investigation into is it just for throwing beer cans or is it oh. the whole oh. shebang Philadelphia Eagle fans might be in trouble. Why do you think they are getting mad at you? (laughs) Yeah, you. Why do you think you're taking so much of the Philadelphia fan pushback? Why why would you? I don't know. It has nothing to do with the t-shirt that I made. It could be. That could be it. It could be uh, some of your tweets. It could be, you but, know, me. But why do you? you know, why do you promoting, think? you know, or like putting on actual facts and, and video evidence, you know, stuff that people don't like to see unless it says thirty eight to seven. And <laughs> right. there's one thing I want to say: no Vikings fans are upset that the Vikings lost. Everyone realizes that they got their teeth kicked in. By the Eagles. The Eagles were the better team that day. No one is arguing that. People are upset about beer cans being thrown, punches being thrown, people being pushed down the stadium stairs, people's hats being taken and thrown in urinals, female Vikings fans being threatened with rape, people being put in hospitals, the beer bottles being thrown at the team bus. Like this is what people are pissed off about. Not the game. Yeah. I I'm happy for the Eagles that they won the Super Bowl because they're a good team. Like. I don't care that they lost. <laughs> they yeah. don't. That's as not the like, issue here. The Eagles were the better team that day. That's not even a question. I don't understand how it is being framed as upset that you lost. Because sure, that, see. to me, is the issue with the... it. Uh, that's always seems to be the argument from Philadelphia Eagles fans. Or from oh, you know, the people who are... You're, yeah, you're salty. just get over it. You're salty. You lost. Okay, you're salty. Like nobody has mentioned doesn't have, doesn't have anything to do with that. Nothing to do with the game itself at, at all. At the same time, I don't want to lose my brain cells spending time like, trying to explain to these people that it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, I think you might be wise to I, not. I have better yeah. things to do in my life, like clip my nails. <laughs> it also in in. Poop is poop <laughs> I mean well that is a you know yeah I can't blame you there you get a lot of work I would also be right? I would also rather be doing that than arguing with somebody on Twitter about yeah, an well, investigation that I didn't start happening that yeah, I clearly, wrote an article clearly it's about. not Vikings fans just being soft bitter the NFL is actually looking into it and has said the like the chief of security or whatever has said that changes are probably going to be be made in the near future. Like, so Eagles fans could essentially ruin like the fan experience for the rest of the fans around the NFL as far as like tailgating goes, and the alcohol like being widely available in stadiums like for the mm-hmm. whole game. Like, do you stuff think like that? Do you think that's actually... going to be a, a an NFL wide thing, or it's do you possible. think that will be specific to Philadelphia? It's possible. There's fights all the time at, at games in the stands. It gets so ugly going to a game. Honestly, there are. Like, I love football. I love watching football. There are certain areas of the stadium that, yeah. if you gave me tickets to, I would probably be like, "I'm good, man." 
I yeah, don't, like, I don't, have, I don't want to I don't do have, that. I don't have kids, but if I did, I wouldn't take them to an NFL game. No. I take them to a I take them to a college game. Yeah. I wouldn't take them to an NFL game. Or if I was going to take my kids to an NFL game, it would have to be in in a the situation, <laughs> yeah, in a situation where I knew that I was going to be able to keep them away from the drunkenness. Because I'm not saying that you shouldn't get drunk at a football game, but I don't want my kid hanging out while you're get, throwing haymakers in the scene. Yeah, I saw a video yesterday of like it was the tailgate before the NFC Championship, and this Eagles fan like went up to one somebody wearing a Vikings jersey and like got in his face, and then a bunch of his friends were Eagles fans, and they actually got in that guy's face, and they started to tussle. So it was Eagles fans against Eagles fans. Mm. Surprise. Um, and the guy who was fighting, somebody stopped, like, the still shot, and the dude had, like, a gun in his, like, back Race pocket. Man. Rad. Like, dude, Woo. why why, <laughs> you, why, is that necessary? It's so difficult for me to comprehend because I just have never been a part of the, like, but it's everybody. The it's every fight fan base is like that. Whenever there's opposing teams, you know, that's what people do. I just – that's not what the majority of people do, I don't think. I think it's a and, – and seeing this is – if it's – if it's such a small minority, you shouldn't have an issue with rules changing to affect yeah, that so small upset? group. Yeah. What are you so pissed about if you this super- is just – a small group of people that you won the Super Bowl. You just sit back and relax and yeah. la- laugh at everyone complaining about your fans. Yeah, man. Instead I don't know. Like, I just, you guys are so- I just am so tired of like taking. Not, I mean, I personally have not had any real interaction with Philadelphia Eagle fans or angry ones, and I have no issue with that. I just am so tired of it being like. I haven't even heard of people. Just go back. Just go back to celebrating the Super Bowl and leave us. Nobody has said anything to me. <laughs> Nothing at all. Did you? Okay, yeah, nothing. Sounds. I think some okay. dude retweeted my T-shirt pic today. Oh he had like no! Philadelphia dude, and he had like twenty-five thousand followers. <laughs> and then twenty minutes later, I opened my message, my mentions, and it's like. <laughs> Well, that's a retweet, so, so I'm like, thanks, guys. Yeah, no kidding. Keep, there you go. Keep tweeting that. I ended up. My uh, delivery driver gig, I deliver to the s- liquor store that had the, like, the little marquee that said, like, Nick Foles to the pit of despair. I don't know if I've told this story on no. on the podcast or not. But uh, I think Courtney Cronin saw it, took a picture of it, retweeted it. This is, like, in the week leading up to the game. Mm. That liquor store got like call after call after call after call after oh, call no. after call. It was all day. And I talked to the guy, the the dude that owns it or runs it, I think he's just a manager. And he said the vast majority of the phone calls were just he would say hello and they would they, no, they would just call him a faggot and hang up. <laughs> and he said and it was that he said it was that all day. Best part of the story, he is a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. He, like, doesn't even <laughs> care. Like, just could not care about the Vikings and hated it the whole, oh. Is so. there, come on, is there any other fan base that does that? I mean, I don't know of one. And that, like, here's, whether there the is or not. Like, everybody? Whether it is, I, I just, it bugs me that. The reputation. How do you argue with somebody whose entire philosophy is to be the thing that you are trying to convince them not to be? You know, like how do you convince all of those Philadelphia Eagle fans that they don't want to do that because that behavior is stupid when they are so super proud of that behavior and wear it like a badge of honor? Like that just doesn't feel like it's worthy of a conversation. Sixers fans or Flyers fans or Phillies, even Phillies fans are are like that. It's just Eagles fans. And they've always been like that. Yeah. I don't know, man. I watched Silver Lining Playbook or whatever, and, like, they <laughs> seemed cool on that. Like, there was well, some talk about, that, like, uh, some juju stuff. And, like, I was, I do that sort of stuff, too, with the that, sweatshirt uh, and the watching, washing and not washing. Mark, that Mark Wahlberg miracle dude movie or whatever. Uh, went, like, the garbage Oh, movie. yeah, Invincible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Which... 
It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They maybe the greatest episode ever on that show is the oh, and game China. gets invincible. Oh my god, that's the funniest <laughs> episode ever. So like, I am torn with the Philadelphia thing because I'm having a real tough time with these football fans who are like, like seeming like they're really bully ish. I'm not into that. I really like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I really like Jennifer Lawrence. She was in Silver Lining Playbook. So like, I'm torn. You know, like I don't know which you know which way to lean because like i want to be part of the brotherly love but i also don't want to get yelled at on twitter so. I, just, I just laugh i really just laugh now because people so many people are just like 38 to 7 and i'm just like yeah i don't i don't care <laughs> i don't care about that well it, it to me it's now turning into it's a bigger deal for them than it is for us you know like the way they're trying to use it as though it was the new england atlanta thing and it's not that for us like we just got our asses kicked and if you think that's the first time that we've been through that, like you don't even like you ain't even on the list, Philly. Like you of like most painful like losses. Puh, get Dude, out of here. At least we scored a touchdown against that's, the Eagles. Yeah. Wait, sorry, at least they scored a touchdown. Yeah. They, yeah, that's right. Be a journalist. Now it's about integrity. Um But yeah, like <laughs> I saw some site, some Eagles site wrote like that Vikings fans are still whining and yeah yeah that was the about, article about, that well i was just like this whole thing is about the, about the loss and i'm like blown, you guys are being investigated it has nothing to do with the vikings like don't blame it on us yeah i didn't tattle on you there yeah. was a thing that happened here there Literally, i you it's sent someone to the hospital my job is to write about news with the team and this is the thing the team in the news like this i didn't do this i'm just writing about it. I don't understand. But, yeah, that is the thing that bothers me. Oh, it's like, oh you guys are just butt hurt. Like, oh, I'm not. What? No. <laughs> I haven't thought about I literally haven't thought about that game since, like, the week after it happened. Because it was oh. a bummer, but I was already over it. And, it was, like I said, it wasn't like, dude, you ain't even in the top ten of, like, most painful Vikings losses I even, ever. I even <laughs> did, like, a, a post on, like, the Falcons Reddit page asking, because so many Eagles fans were like, well, the Falcons didn't, Falcons didn't complain about anything, so I made a post in the Falcons like Reddit page, like, what was your experience like at the divisional game? Some guy, unsurprisingly, said a lot of the same things. Went on, that went on, in the NFC Championship. Go figure. Go figure. I'm not a detective, but I think there might be some merit to this investigation. Although there is a detective that people can call the Philadelphia Police Department who is dealing with the case of the guy that got sent to the hospital. So if people would like more information on that, they can go and look that up. Boom. Not fake news. Not fake news. Real news. All right, let's stop talking about other teams' fan bases. Dumb people. Let's stop, let's stop talking about stupid people. Stupid idiots. Uh, let's do, I'm not sure what we're going to call the new segment, but it's definitely going to have a sounder. And what we're going to do is compare our brand spanking new quarterback to all the other starting quarterbacks in the NFL. The Untitled Quarterback Ranking Segment. Sounder already happened. Let's start with our division, shall we? Yeah. So. Okay, first, first, first. Let's, uh, we are talking about choosing... Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins versus for next season for just not, next season, not in the future, not, not to build, to build a, a franchise around, not to also be including, you know, rookies in this. And we're not just for one season, 2018. Okay. Aaron Rodgers. That's going to be a no. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers there. Yep. <clears throat> Matthew Stafford. Ooh. I would take Stafford. Yeah, yeah, because the Lions don't have a lot of weapons, and they've still been able to be pretty good Mm -hmm. on offense. And he doesn't lose games for you, which is a good job. No, he's pretty good at at coming back, too. Yeah. Uh, Trubisky? No, I think Kirk Cousins is a better guy for next season. That's what we're talking about. I say... Keeping track of these, you I know. see cousins. I am, but I've already screwed it up. So <laughs> we got a 
You can just make like, can you make like tallies for like? I know I'm yes, trying to know. Yes Suddenly no? I got like a multiple tally situation going, and I already can't like <laughs> decipher what's going on here. So I said nobody wants Trubisky over Cousins. We'll have to, we'll have to come to an agreement on. <clears throat> so it's less confusing. Yeah. So okay. Stafford and Rodgers are better than Cousins, and Trubisky is not. So right now, yes. Okay. Cousins is the number three quarterback in the NFL. Yes. So I have one. Okay, I think. Okay, Arizona. Who? Let's say I'm Bradford now. That's gonna be a no. I'm gonna go with Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Yes. He uh, he has played in all 16 games the past three seasons. Sam Bradford has not. Not so much. Seattle. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson better. I, better off. Yeah. I would go he, Russell. Wilson. He really has no one on offense now. With Jimmy Graham gone and Paul Richardson gone. And that whole defense is basically gone. I mean, he's got a lot of reserve Vikings. And and some rookies, pretty much. Super fun. Uh, L.A. Rams. Goff. I would take take Cousins over Goff. I I think Goff is more a product of that offense than than his abilities. He's he's talented, but he's he's still... Mm -hmm. Figuring out how to do things on his own. Do you think if Jared Goff and Cousins switch, like, is that how you're doing this? Like, if Jared Goff was on the Vikings for this season, do you think they would win more games than if Cousins was? I think Cousins wins more games. Uh, yeah, yeah, Cousins. Okay. okay. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, San Francisco. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'm going to go Cousins because I haven't seen enough from – I mean, he looked really good, but – Yeah. <coughs> yeah. A lot of season. And, and Garoppolo – he did get hurt that one year. He played for the Patriots when Brady missed that, those four games. He did get hurt, I think, after the third game. So, health is a factor in this in this ranking. The best available. God, and I, I screwed would, it I up. Would, God, that's like my tagline, and I I would messed put, it up. I would put Garoppolo though, like on the slot, right below Cousins. Okay. I think but you would still. I think there was some stuff about Kyle Shanahan actually this week about him, like still wanting Kirk Cousins even after they got Jimmy Garoppolo. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, New York Giants. Eli, I guess. Anyone else in the AFC West? Is there? Seattle, Arizona, Seattle, Miami. LA, San Francisco. I think that's it. Oh no, you're right. Yeah. So what do we got now? We got Giants Cousins. in the East. Cousins is fourth, fourth best. Yep. I think so. One, two, three. Yeah. Yep. It's very, it's <laughs> I, I made it so impossible for me to figure out. <laughs> I screwed this up so bad. Just do like, just write the names. I have to, no, no, no. I have to just stick You'll with what I, I got to okay. stick with okay. what I got. Cause that's part of the issue is we just got too many. You probably should have figured this out beforehand. But that's okay. Yeah, this is it on air production meeting. It's make cool. It We're going to go. Here we go. This is, okay. <clears throat> Eli Manning. I choose Cousins. Kirk Cousins, yeah. Philly would be Wentz. I am also going to – oh, God. I'm going to take a lot of crap for this, I bet. But I'm going to take Cousins over Wentz. Coming I, up the ACL. It's coming up the torn ACL. Oh, yeah, good call. See, justified. I just don't like him as a quarterback. I'm sorry. I just have not – I don't believe it. I just don't – he played great. He looked great. He was awesome. I can't deny I think, that. I also think that's – he's more of a product of the offense than – individual skills he's good he's probably gonna be really good but um i'd take cousins yeah yeah for 2018 for 2018 dallas why am i blanking on kids name dak prescott Prescott. thank you um i'm uh, i think i might take dak prescott just because i don't know Excuse you, Dak Prescott. He's got a really good. Um, I'm just gonna sound like a Josh Allen. Lover, yeah. He's got a really good. He's oh, got a, really he's good got a cannon. He's got a big arm. Does he's, he? He's good. He can scramble. A lot of like. There's a lot more playing quarterback in the NFL than just having a big arm. Okay. But I mean, last year when Ezekiel Elliott wasn't there, the Cowboys weren't that great. With just Dak Prescott, so I can go with Cousins. I think that he, Prescott, is, you talked about product of system. That line is really good. 
They're using him yeah. in the right way. And it looks like when they are trying to get him to win games and when they need him to win games, he's not doing a great job of it. Or isn't as good as when all those pieces are around him. It's good. I think he's I'm gonna take his, his last year was his second year. I think he actually played better than his rookie year, so he's he's got a good seems like he's got a good future still. No, I think he can be very successful, but I think he un, I think because he's so young, I think that the situation he's in is helping him a ton. I think if you take him out of that situation, I think he's not nearly as successful. You put him in Cleveland and he's out of the league already. That was a hot take there. I'm not sure. I was just letting that simmer. I mean, you can put a lot of people in Cleveland and they'd be out of the league. <laughs> That's what I did. Come on, man. Quit watering down my hot take. <clears throat> okay, Washington. Alex Smith. I'd take Cousins. Although that one gets a little bit dicier because I think Alex Smith is really underrated. I think he's really good. And I think he's just gotten stuck. He, that San Francisco stretch was so bad for him just for, like, reputation, for his reputation. Because I well, think he's yeah, a lot better than He had, that. like, five different offensive coordinators in, like, his first five years. So. Yeah, I think he had five in his first six years. That yeah. might have had something to do with it. You know, trying to learn how to be a quarterback and then having to learn a new system every single year. Exactly. How do you which get good kinda, at something when you're doing something different every year? Kind of helped him to where he is now the, with the ability to, that he knows multiple systems and schemes and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So he can go um, to a different system and be okay. Yeah, he's a lot better than yeah than he used to be. Um, I don't know. He was good last year, but at the same time, Chiefs got to the playoffs and couldn't advance. So I'll take I'll take Cousins. I mean, I think the Redskins wanted Cousins, but they knew they had to trade for somebody. Yeah, and they're going to come out and say like, "Oh, Alex Smith is a better option." But I think Cousins. Alex, yeah, I think Alex Smith is like my. You had the like one and one A. I think that's Alex Smith is in that for me. I think Cousins is. I think he's just below Cousins. And I think if you you could switch, and I think those records would stay the same if you swap those players out. I think Washington's going to be horrible because I think they're going to like sabotage themselves, and they're the worst franchise ever. But oh yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that's all for the NFC East. Uh, Carolina. Cam Newton. Yeah, I'm going to go with Cam Newton there. I mean, the what do you have a 50 yard run against the Vikings last year? That's really all you need to. Oh, for that. Uh, I mean, might be different next year after he spends a year with North Turner, but we'll see how that goes. I am so excited to watch the <laughs> Carolina next season. I just don't – I just there's no way in my brain, there's no way that they make the playoffs or are successful. You, I just cannot well, imagine never, it. You haven't been given a reason to think that way with a North Turner offense before. Yeah. So that, you know, recently at least. Oh, that tweet's gaining some uh, traction, by the way. Hot take of Cam Newton spending some time on the... I'm just hot taking and tweeting all over, man. I don't know if you've been watching, but, but you it's just... Do that uh, for some... That's some Eagles fans, see what happens. I don't... I don't think, I don't think they'll respond, but... Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm good on... I don't want to engage <laughs> Philly fans at all. You don't want anyone, call, you don't want anyone calling you? <laughs> no, exactly. I don't want that at all. Call, calling me a slur. I don't want that. Uh, New Orleans. Stop. I'm going to oh. take Drew Brees. Yeah. This is a rough division for our guy. Matt Ryan. Next year, next year, Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. Tampa would be Winston. Mm-hmm. That one, I would... Cousins. Yeah, I would Cousins. go Cousins over over Winston there as well. So, that was, so Cousins moved down, down like three slots. Then. Yeah. So, of the teams in the NFC, there are one, two, three, four, five, six quarterbacks better than him, in my opinion. Okay. All right. System's working. Systems, yeah. systems I'd, working. I would say, like, in our opinion. In our opinion, yeah. We were, we were very similar. I'm sorry. Co-host. I just didn't want to lump you in with my uh, goofy talent. It's okay. You can do that. Uh, okay. To the NFC. <clears throat> AFC. AFC. I was there, I had it. I was, I was there. I was there. <laughs> um, well, let's start with an easy one, New England. I'm going to go with Tom Brady there. Tight, but I'm going to go Tom Brady. How about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to agree. 
Uh, Buffalo. Who plays quarterback in Buffalo next year? Do we know? Is that an AJ McCarron? Did AJ McCarron, McCarron is there right, right now? Right now. Right now. So we're gonna have to go with Cousins. Yeah. Sorry, Buffalo. Uh, like, even if they had a even if they had a rookie, I think you would pick Cousins over Cousins the over the rookie for sure. Miami. Who is that? Tannehill coming back from yep. an ACL injury. Yep. I'd go Cousins there. I think. Coming back from an ACL after he hurt his knee the year before, too. So, yeah, you go Cousins. Yeah. Uh, the Jets, Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> um, Josh McCown, though, isn't it? He's a starter. Well, I mean, technically, but we all well, Josh, know, who, we all know who's going to win that who win that battle, right? I would, yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we go with Cousins over both of them. Me too. Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't like Big Ben at all, but I have. He's look, he, Roethlisberger looked like not that great the past couple of years, but still take him over Cousins. Would he throw too. six interceptions in that game against Jacksonville <laughs> or whatever? Yeah, Jacksonville's good, though. They got good well, and he does that. Like, every year he's got two or three games in the beginning of the season, and everybody's, oh, God, what's wrong with Should Pittsburgh? And how are you? Oh, God. Here. And then they're always in the – playoffs it drives me crazy i don't like him for whatever reason that's like an he's, irrational fan thing but i just don't like him i feel like he's a good playoff clutch kind of quarterback to have so that kind of factors in yeah i would take him over kirk cousins though. sorry kirk baltimore joe flacco elite joe flacco cousins i'm gonna go cousins over flacco Given the last, however many, yeah, no thanks. Cincinnati. Andy Who Dalton. even? It, oh, yeah, Andy Dalton. I was like, no, the AJ McCarron's <laughs> gone. Who's there? That's, that's how good he is. He didn't <laughs> yeah. know he was a starter. And he's totally been a starter forgot for like about four him. years. Yeah. Oh man. Sorry, Andy Dalton. Gonna go with Cousins. Cleveland. Cousins. Right. Is that what you? No. Okay. Cousins. Cousins. Yeah, me too. Uh, Jacksonville. This is like riveting here. Our what? I don't even know what division. Is this the South. 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 Okay. <clears throat> South. Here we go. Blake Bortles. He's still Jacksonville. Blake Bortles. They signed him. Resigned him. <laughs> I think go I cousins on that one. <laughs> yep, I go cousins. Marcus Mariota in Tennessee. Mm. Still, Mario is still he's still progressing. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say Cousins there. Although I do really like. If we were talking about like it. for the future, mm-hmm. probably pick Mariota. Yes, but we're not. We're not talking about next season. Just next season. Indy, I would take Andrew Luck over uh, Kirk yeah. Cousins with the injury stuff. Because he's so good. I think he's so good. Yeah, I'd rather he, have him. What if he doesn't play again? Uh, that would be unfortunate for my 2018 team. <laughs> <laughs> but I just can't. Well, uh, If it's Andrew Luck, yeah, I would pick. I don't even know that because he hasn't played in so long. What if he, yeah. If you can guarantee that Andrew Luck is going to play, I'm Andrew Luck. A, even with the history. Coach? Even with the history of injury, I would yeah. still. Yeah. But what if he doesn't play? Jacoby Brissett, I think. Is he there? Or is he gone? I don't, I don't even, no, I, don't even know. I think he's still there. They traded yeah. for him, didn't they? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, they oh. did. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I, I would pick Cousins over Jacoby Brissett. And I, I'd still pick Cousins over Andrew Luck this for next season. Because I don't know how he's, Luck is going to look coming off of being out for a while. Yeah, and if you – yes, if you're taking all of that into consideration and we don't know if he's going to play because he hasn't played, has he been, like, confirmed to play? Wasn't he supposed to play last year and just never was, like, cleared to play? Yeah. And if he's yeah. still in that – yeah. Mm-hmm. Cousins is the guy. Yeah, I guess it's definitely a safer bet than – yeah, than Andrew Luck. Who would have thought that? Kirk Cousins is a – better bet a safer bet than andrew luck was that draft was it 
Craig. RG3, Andrew Luck. Was Matt Khalil in that draft, too? Mm. I think that was 2012. So yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oof. Was it? Yeah. What, Ooh, what a draft. Yikes. And then, yeah. The amount of picks that Washington threw. Yeah. St. Louis? Or Los Angeles now, I guess. Phew. Crazy. Okay, moving on. Houston. Deshaun Watson. Ooh. For just he's coming up, he's coming up ACL too. I will go with Cousins, but only because of the injury and because he's young. And it's just the one year. If it was for he even was good though last year. He, he was, was so good last year. But he's also coming off an injury. And it's only his second year in the NFL. People So I'm gonna go Cousins. Yeah. Have tape on him now and stuff. So in the NFL, they didn't have a tape on him before, but yeah. Uh, Kansas City. That's rookie, Mahomes. isn't it, Mahomes? Yeah. Or not rookie, second but second year, yeah. Gotta take Cousins because you just don't, you just don't know. For sure. Uh, the Los Angeles via San Diego Chargers. Nice. Uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, go Rivers. I think here because I think he's really good. He's still playing for them, right? He didn't retire or anything. <laughs> Did I miss any? Yeah, minutes? I think he has like probably one or two more decent seasons left. In <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I never like in his heyday, he was really good. But yeah, that was kind of a long time ago now. He seems to have more bad games than good lately. Yeah. But I'll go. I'll go. I can go. This is just for 2018, so I can. If you put, I think if you put Rivers, you know, if you put Rivers on the Vikings. Yes, that's the way I've been looking at it. If Rivers was playing for the Vikings, do you think they maybe, maybe would win more games than with Cousins? I think they would. Yes. Yeah. His arm is so strong. And that's savvy. He's yeah. just uh, savvy. Actually, I also like that he trash talks a yeah. lot, but he doesn't swear, which makes it even better. He's like, oh, son of a biscuit. <laughs> it's like listening to Roy Williams. Dang, gummit. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not... I think Case Keenum's like that, too. Is like, he really? I was watching it was Hard Knocks when they had him. <laughs> they did the Rams. And he was like, ah, oh, shoot. Everyone's like, dude, come on. Yeah, gross. <laughs> Use a real curse, buddy. <laughs> That would make sense, cause that is he's got that like southern Dang it. nice boy. <laughs> oh, Shucks. oh darn! Oh. You're being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Philip Rivers. Where are we? Two left. Oakland. Derek Carr. I think mm, no. Lot of injury concern. What did he do? He broke his leg, right? Was that last year or was that the year before that he broke his leg before the playoffs? And they just didn't. No, I think they just didn't make the playoffs last year. Or was he hurt for it? No, they didn't. They didn't make the playoffs last year. But yeah, was he injured for? I don't know. I don't think he was. I don't think he was hurt. I don't remember. Well, I think EJ Manuel played for like one game. He was their backup. Yeah, when you look at it, I'm gonna do the same thing. If you take if you take Cousins off and you put him in with the Vikings, I think that's basically even. I'll take Cousins. I don't know if if Carr is going to win you more games than Cousins would, so I'll, I'll take Cousins. Yeah. There. When it's when their skill set's similar, you got to look at you have to look at injury history. Uh, Denver. They got um, a guy. I'm not the, sure the, if you've heard think, of him. I think the Vikings have already told everyone who they think is better. Well, now's your opportunity to tell them what they should do. I think they made the right decision. Yeah. I like Case Keenum a lot, and I was very, I very he, wrong about him. Yeah. yeah, I hope he does well, even though there's talk of the Broncos selecting a quarterback with a number five pick. So apparently they don't even think that he's the future. Oh, dude. Uh-huh. Poor Case Keenum. He gets up there, and John Elway's introducing him and says his name he's wrong. Oh, oh. He, Case Keenum. Case is there anything like <laughs> could you have it's, possibly it's, it's, made him feel less welcomed than you did by mispronouncing so yeah, his name after so you, you said he was the guy you wanted? 
No, he wasn't. <laughs> we Wait, can tell because you don't know oh, his yeah. name. Uh. Whoops. Oh, man. And... John may have taken a couple too many hits to the head. Yeah, he might have. Yeah, maybe he's got... I mean, it's we shouldn't joke about CTE, so never mind. Why not? <clears throat> um, <laughs> he also, if you look at his track record, he has not been the best at identifying quarterbacks who are going to play well for his franchise. Even, because the first thing that people say then is, oh, but Peyton Manning, he was awful in his last year. Awful. Just, he was so just, bad in Denver that people <laughs> thought Brock Osweiler was really good. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah, yeah. Think about that. That's how it's bad not, he it's was. It's not even just quarterbacks. He hasn't really been that good. Oh, man. Yeah. Peyton Manning was so bad that year that he missed like six games and still led the league in interceptions at 30, the end of. Very good. Whew. Very Phillips. good. Phillips. Where did he, where is Wade Phillips now? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Oh, and they just signed Dominic and <sighs> Sue, and they're going to have they, a really scary defense. Leib, and they got Marcus Peters. Oh, and God, I forgot about Aaron that. Aaron Donald. Yikes. Like, play them next year. Just once. So. That's, got, that's probably a playoff team, right? They, got, they didn't – no, they, they had Sammy Watkins. I'm trying to think if they got anyone else on the offense. Oh, where did Sammy Watkins team. go? Baltimore? Chiefs? I just I can't remember. Early. Yeah, they're going to be really good. I don't they're gonna know. They're going to have a tougher schedule. So, let's we'll see. But their defense should be pretty good. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. if. Well, that their coach has been... Because he was in Washington before, correct? How many years was he in Washington? As uh, was he just the offensive coordinator for one season there, and then moved up that fast? I feel like he might have been the quarterbacks coach. Okay. Four. Okay. Because Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator there for. Oh like, yeah, duh, duh, duh. Yeah, good call. My fault. You're totally right there. See, I just don't. That's so much. I I know these guys have been coaching their whole lives, but to like just decide after one good season. That this head coach is like the new, the best new thing, and he's the bomb. Like I just don't. That's a lot. That's a, didn't look that good against the Vikings. Right? Yeah, and that's a lot of stuff to put on a guy who has never done this before and is in the middle of his first season he's to good, just though. decide. I mean, he seems good, and I, I hope you know whatever. Like I don't care if I hope he's great. I hope he, I hope he's wonderful. But after one season, to just have decided that like he's an elite head coach and can turn bad teams into good teams is kind of a stretch, I think. So you want to actually, like, give it time before jump, like, jump into conclusions? I mean, I guess. That's not how I would have said it, but... <laughs> oh. somebody, doesn't agree. somebody doesn't agree with you. I mean, whatever. God, this dog is <laughs> just... What is it? So we did all the teams, right? Yeah, that was it. That was the whole thing. I don't know what that segment's called, but that was good for a first time. Were you able to figure out how many quarterbacks we said were better than Kirk Cousins? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So he is the 11th best quarterback in the NFL. I I agree with that. Yeah, that seems right because I hear a lot of talk about 14th, 15th, and I just thought that that seems low for him. It's not Ten that big of a sense. difference, but at the same time, it is. Well, and that makes oh, that's, <laughs> that makes sense because if you would ask me, is he a top ten quarterback? I'd be like, he's close. I don't know. Well, that's, that's what I'll say. Close. Yep, that's what I'll say. All right, I uh, let's be done so I can duty calls end this dot so I can destroy. Oh, whoa, whoa! I this just, is a family show. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna pet him nicely because I don't that dog. <laughs> All right. Good talk. Let's That's see you. Uh, if, yeah. Uh, if I survive, you know, the Philadelphia people—they're oh, pretty. Oh, yeah, they're pretty brutal. So be safe. What? All right. Talk to you next okay. week. Skull legs. <laughs>